This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Each and every object created in 3ds Max has a specific location from where that object will both rotate and scale. That position is known as the object's pivot point, and it's going to be important that you be able to not just locate that pivot, but to also be able to move its position. This video will show you how that's done. Let's create a teapot in the middle of our perspective view. Once on the screen, let's center things up using the Control shift z shortcut for Zoom Extents All. We'll then right-click on the screen to exit the teapot creating command. An object's pivot location is almost always represented on the screen by the position of its transformation gizmo. On the teapot, you'll notice the gizmo location to be at the bottom center of the object. Let's go ahead and rotate the teapot in a couple different views and we'll see how things turn out. As you can see, the teapot was rotating from its bottom. Let's try the same thing in the top view. We'll activate that. Grab the yellow ring again and rotate. From here, it appears to be rotating from the center. Now, the same is going to hold true as far as where the teapot would scale from, again, originating from the object's gizmo, its pivot point in other words. Let's activate the Scale command using the R shortcut key and we'll turn our attention to the perspective view. In that window, let's lock down to the blue stick direction and notice the way that looks in the front view as we scale. As you can see, the teapot is scaling from its pivot point located at the bottom of the object. Let's scale only in the green direction in our perspective view and look how that looks on both windows on the left hand side. Here again, we can see the scaling effect originating from the center of the object, the bottom center. If we instead opt to do a 3D scale in the perspective view, let's see how that turns out. The object from its bottom center scales larger and smaller. Now, even though each object in a scene can have only a single pivot point, that pivot's position can be moved. Something that you'll end up doing in your own personal work more than you might think. Here's how you move the location of a pivot point. Let's first activate the Move command. Heading over to the Command panel on the right, we'll now activate the Hierarchy tab. It's going to be on the top row, third in from the left hand side. Looks like a white box with three smaller white boxes hanging down below. You'll notice three options at the top, Pivot, IK, and Link Info. Pivot will be on by default. Directly below that, in the section called Adjust Pivot, here's what we're going to want to do. The first button down reads Affect Pivot Only. Now that's what we're going to want to do here, so go ahead and click on that button. This now puts you into a different mode, working exclusively on the pivot's location. In the front view, let's now move the gizmo to the tip of the teapot spout. That'll be over on the right hand side. Once we have it in the new position, back on the right, we're going to want to turn off the Effect Pivot Only button. Let's now reactivate the Rotate command and see just exactly where in our scene the gizmo shows up. Take a look at that. The gizmo, the point on which the object will now rotate or scale, has moved itself to the tip of the spout. Why don't we give ourselves a little extra room in both the front and top views by rolling our mouse back. Now, back in the front, let's activate the yellow ring and spin things around. Notice now how the teapot rotates completely different than it did before. Let's try that same rotation over in the top view. We'll grab the yellow ring and go to work. You'll see the same effect having the pivot point in a new position when you scale. We'll activate the Scale command and lock ourselves down to the red or X stick. As you can see, the teapot is scaling in relation to the position of the gizmo. Let's activate the front view, this time scaling in green. Again, we can see the effect of the pivot point's new location. Now that pivot position can be moved throughout a project, all depending on what you're needing to do. What it can't do though is be animated. So if animating an object, rotating or scaling, that transformation will be done from wherever the pivot point was last positioned. Something important to keep in mind. Now, back in the hierarchy column on the right, there's a couple other pivot controls that you should be aware of. Let's take our transformation back to move. And to reactivate being working only on the pivot point, back on the right hand side, we'll click on Effect Pivot Only. Down in the Alignment category just below, you have the ability to center a pivot point directly in the middle of any object. That's easily done by simply clicking on Center to Object. If ever wanting to reposition the pivot back to its default location, in the Pivot category, simply click on Reset Pivot. This returns the pivot to its original location, which isn't always in the center of your object, like we've seen here with this teapot. Let's go ahead and turn Effect Pivot Only back off. 
Now, get this, Max also offers a way to temporarily move a pivot, which comes in real handy when you want a quick reposition but don't want to leave the pivot in that new location. The temporary repositioning of the pivot will have you working in what is called working pivot mode. Here's how you do that. Let's say that we want, for just a moment, to move our pivot to the middle of the teapot's handle. We'll leave the teapot's official pivot where it is, down at the bottom center. We'll instead enter working pivot mode. In the Working Pivot category, about halfway down the column on the right, click on Edit Working Pivot. This allows us to now reposition our temporary pivot. In the front view, let's go ahead and move our pivot to the far left edge of the teapot's handle. With it now in position, back in the right hand column, we'll turn off Edit Working Pivot. Once we've done that, directly below, we'll activate Use Working Pivot. OK, let's go ahead and take our perspective view full screen. You'll notice that the transformation gizmo has now been positioned at the back end of the teapot's handle. Let's activate the rotate command and see how we now rotate the teapot. The temporary working pivot now allows us to rotate the teapot from the back side of the handle. What's real nice about this option is that it also works in sub-object mode. Let's do this. With the object selected, we'll right-click converting down to an editable poly. That now gives us the ability of working at the sub-object level in the stack. Before doing that though, we'll click again on the Hierarchy tab, reactivating Edit Working Pivot. Let's now move this temporary pivot a little closer to the middle of the teapot and up, kind of toward the edge of the lid. With it now in position, we'll turn off Edit Working Pivot and head to the Modify column so we can make a sub-object selection. Let's now drop down to the Element way of selecting and click on the lid. Notice the position of the pivot point. We can now, using the Rotate's green ring, rotate the lid so it tilts up. If we wanted to instead rotate the lid from the other side, well, back to Edit Working Mode we go, and we'll make the quick switch over. We'll return to Use Working Pivot, back to the Editable Poly element level, and we'll rotate. Anything selected at the sub-object level will now rotate or scale from this new temporary pivot location. You could see how that would work if we, for example, scaled an X. When we're done, we simply get out of sub-object mode and turn working pivot off. Once that's been accomplished, we're back to rotating and scaling our teapot from its original pivot point location. So there you go with the working pivot and pivot points in general. Now, there won't be many projects where moving a pivot a time or two won't come into play. So practice the techniques and be ready to put them into action.